The model's policy makers typically use to determine the effectiveness of monetary and fiscal policy has the common assumption that there is a representative agent, so you and I, that has all available information, then forms expectations rationally, and whenever there is new information would update his or her expectations and then crucially also his or her consumption plans. Yet in the data we oftentimes see that policies that at least theoretically in those type of models should operate through the very same mechanism and channels are vastly differently effective in affecting consumptions and savings decisions of broader populations like in Europe or in the US. For example, two very stark differences are so-called forward guidance announcements or unconventional fiscal policies. So imagine unconventional fiscal policy relies on the idea that the government pre-announces a future increase in consumption taxes and then it's pretty straightforward for ordinary people to understand before taxes go up, prices are more expensive, maybe I should go out, buy a new car, buy a new furniture and so on. And indeed in the data we see that those type of policies, very simple and straightforward to communicate, are very effective for the broader population to raise their inflation expectations, but crucially also their consumption spending. Instead, a policy that also theoretically works through the same intertemporal substitution margin forward guidance is actually not effective at all in stimulating overall consumption and inflation expectations. So the idea here is whenever the Federal Reserve lowers interest rates, this then lowers the mortgage payments individuals have to make and through that mechanism at the end of the month individuals have more available income and so therefore can actually start spending more. However, at a very basic level, there are two different kind of mortgages. On the one hand, we have adjustable rate mortgages and on the other hand, we have fixed rate mortgages. So what does it mean for the transmission of policy? Whenever we see a decrease in the federal, target rate, federal funds target rate, so the key policy instrument of the Federal Reserve, this typically maps one to one into reduction in mortgage payment for all individuals that have an adjustable rate mortgage. Theoretically, of course, you could also assume that fixed rate mortgage holders might see a reduction in mortgage payments, but this, in this case it's not automatic, but instead individuals would have to go to their bank, start refinance, and then actually after locking in a lower rate for again a fixed rate mortgage, they would also get benefits of reduced mortgage payments because of an interest rate cut by the Federal Reserve. However, we oftentimes see in the data that individuals, despite being possibly able to save thousands of dollars per month on mortgage payments, that they do not go to their bank, that they do not refinance their mortgages. And so therefore, if you compare the effectiveness of monetary policy through this refinancing or maybe directly through this just uh, rate mortgage channel, we see that in countries like, let's say, Finland or England that largely has adjustable rate mortgages, monetary policy is potentially way more powerful and effective compared to countries like the US where a big chunk of outstanding mortgages are fixed rate mortgages and so therefore to have this power of monetary policy through mortgage payments, we do have to rely on individuals refinancing their mortgages and so therefore this requires some additional communication, both of maybe directly banks, but crucially also the, the federal government and the Federal Reserve to convince individuals that they actually should go out, refinance their mortgages when policy rates drop to take advantage of those lower mortgage payments. But we oftentimes see that those announcements by the government that, and the Federal Reserve that rely on this raise in inflation expectations oftentimes do not reach broader populations, which then of course also means that there might be the concern of an implicit redistribution from the part of the population that does adjust consumption plans to the part of the population that is actually not adjusting. And so therefore there's this concern that maybe there's a part of the population which might actually be disadvantaged by those policies. And to get an idea actually whether this is partially indeed what's going on in the data, we actually accessed, we were able to access data for all men in Finland. The reason why we only have a male in our population is the data availability that comes from the military, where we got from a military entrance test type of data on IQ for the whole male population in Finland, which then allowed us to study on the one hand whether there is indeed heterogeneity in the expectations formation by cognitive abilities, but crucially also in this intertemporal substitution channel and the adjustment of uh, mortgage payments 
two changes in interest rates. And what we really found really stark in the data is that the top 50% of the population by cognitive abilities, at least in Finland, they behaved like our textbook rational agent and the homo economicus that typically policy institution uh, would actually base their, their inference on. So we see that when they raise their inflation expectations, they want to consume more today. When the European Central Bank lowers interest rates, they would actually go out, take out more loans. When actually the European Central Bank raises interest rates, they would actually lower their propensity to take out loans. Instead, the bottom 50% of the population by cognitive abilities, they have completely inner-sensitive consumption plans to changes in interest rates. They are worse in forming inflation expectations and they do not adjust their outstanding mortgages and uh, two changes in interest rates. So therefore, there's this big concern that there might be an implicit redistribution by common policies for maybe the less fortunate part of the population, at least by cognitive abilities, to the more fortunate part of the population. To understand whether there are ways to possibly uh, strengthen the communication and effectiveness of those policies, we recently cooperated with the Kilsen uh, Center for Marketing at the University of Chicago School of Business and ran our own customized survey together with Nielsen on their home scan panel to get an idea whether individuals would adjust their inflation expectations to targeted communication possibly directly coming from the Federal Reserve. And the very basic idea is imagine you ask individuals what is your one year ahead inflation expectations, then you randomly provide different pieces of information to different parts of the survey population, and then subsequently you elicit again what their inflation expectations are. What we found in this setting is that potentially if you are able to directly communicate with individuals, very simple messages are very powerful in moving expectations. For example, just telling individuals inflation currently is, let's say, 1.x percent, the Federal Reserve targets inflation over longer periods of time of two percentage points, or the forecast by the Federal Reserve is a certain number. Those simple messages were actually very, very powerful in moving the expectations of a broad population. Policymakers instead often would argue they mainly focus on financial markets participants because by committing to a path of short-term interest rates, they would be able to possibly also affect long-term interest rates, which of course are directly uh, important for firm investment and household consumption decisions. And then indirectly, the hope is that the media would pick up those communications and then let's say individuals would read about it in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, or any other of the big newspapers. So we try to understand whether this indirect transmission of policy news through the media is actually effective in shaping expectations similar to the direct communication we documented in this experiment. If we then actually gave individuals in our uh, survey just the recent uh, coverage in the news media of the Federal Open Market Committee policy meeting, we saw that actually this text, which contained way more information than just those simple messages, was actually only half as effective in moving expectations. Now, of course, you could say, simple message, clearly communicated, people understand it, long text, lots of content, maybe it was just an information overflow. To get an idea whether it was just the length of the article or the complexity, we gave another uh, population in our survey just the most recent statement by the Federal Reserve to read. About twice in uh, length as the newspaper article, written in way more complex English compared to the newspaper article. Instead, we saw that the whole FOMC statement written for a technical audience was as effective as those simple messages. So one conclusion from all those findings, of course, could be if only half of the population reacts to certain policies, I just actually have to maybe scale the policy by a factor of two to get the same outcome. But of course, this totally ignores what we discussed earlier, that there is this concern for an implicit redistribution from the part of the population that does not react to the policy to the part of the population that does react to the policy. And so therefore, I think a more constructive solution would be to implement these direct forms of communication from the policy institution like the Federal Reserve to the broader population 
use simple messages instead of complex text and actually also try to directly communicate and explain what those policy changes mean for consumptions and saving decisions.